Alright, hello everyone, and welcome to Season 3, Episode 3 of Star Trek Fenrir. Normally, we're set in the year 2412 aboard a service class in the Sabine Expanse. This week, though, we're doing a holodeck special that will take cues from Dungeons & Dragons. So, like everything else in Season 3, it's a bottle episode. If you want to catch the VODs, they are on YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Other than that, um, I think we're just going to go ahead and get into introductions and then the opening log. So uh, let's start with you, Watney. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm Watney. I play Captain slash Commodore Brie Archuleta, a human woman in her late 30s. I also play the Denobulan Dr. LL. All right. Up next, Dag. Hi, I'm Dag. Uh, you may know me as the Vulcan science officer Vassar, but tonight I'll be playing uh, Zeke the Gorn uh, Dragonborn. It rhymes, so don't you forget it. And if you want to make fun of me, you can find me on Twitter at Trek Nexus. Up next, we have uh, Mr. Williams. Hey guys, uh, I am Aaron. I'll never top that, Dag, so thanks for making me go after you. Uh, <laughs> I'm located in eastern Canada. I play RJ Williams, the chief of security on the Fenrir, also the hypochondriac, uh, sometimes Ensign, sometimes Lieutenant Jensen. Yeah, his his rank goes up and down depending on the mood of the officer of the day. And then last but not least, Mr. Matthew. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Matthew. I play Lieutenant Commander Lee Tobin, one of the Bajoran science officers on board the Fenrir, who is intensely religious. And I also play uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade Cartwright, a uh, tri-limbed... Um, Hydrant security officer. All right. And I think we actually have an opening log from Mr. Lee. So if you would take it away. Science officer Lee Tobin's personal log, stardate 89216.7. If I had doubts about my decision to remain on board the Fenrir, they've been laid by first contact with a nanomachine race known as us. We helped shepherd new life into this universe a species spontaneously generated aboard the Fenrir. And given the vanishingly small possibility of such an occurrence, I cannot help but take it as confirmation from the prophets that this is where I'm meant to be. And if I'm being honest, I'm glad about that. I would rather miss Commander Williams and Vassar. And given the repugnance of the captain's actions in recent missions and Lieutenant Zero's speciesist prejudices, the ship needs more officers like the three of us. Returning to the subject of us, the nanomachine colony has proven remarkably adaptable and accommodating, deciding to remain on Tyvan 6 to assist the colonists there. It will be fascinating to revisit that world in a few years, and my report to Starfleet has recommended that a dedicated team of sociologists and nanomachine experts be dispatched. The Fenrir is now in the gulf between sectors, traveling to our next mission. While I would typically use this time to catch up on some reading, I've been invited by the Commodore to participate in a fantasy hollow novel with the rest of the command crew. I assume that this is some kind of olive branch. Maybe it's time that I reciprocated. End log. I forgot to put up the title card, but uh, today's lovely shot of the ship is uh, you guys are passing through a red-hued area of space on the mm -hmm. outskirts of a nebula. And today's episode title is Diversions. Nice. So our first actual scene is going to be in the corridor where Mr. Williams and Mr. Lee are walking down, uh, perhaps in costume, perhaps not. Uh, why don't we start with Mr. Williams? Uh, are you in costume? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm what are you wearing? Wardrobe. Let's see. Um, it's actually going to be wearing a sort of like silken doublet um the you know command red still um with a deep green cloak brown trousers and knee high boots um also strapped to his side as a satchel uh and carried at his chest um he brought it from home it's his wooden squeeze box accordion i love it and uh, what about mr lee is he in costume uh, Lee is in costume. He's tugging at the uh, the edges of the cloak that he's wearing and uh, this large robe. It's uh, gray in color, and he's sporting a kind of gnarled, knotted staff with a a, um, a kind of crystal embedded at the top. Yeah. Um, yeah. You look. Did you yeah, stop, you, did you stop fidgeting. You, you look fine. 
I don't know. I, I looked up wizard in the uh, human or Terran cultural database, and I, I just kept seeing pictures of this man named Gandalf. So this is what the replicator uh, recommended. Yeah, I'm not not familiar with, with him. Ancient literature, I think? Uh, well, not for Bajoran. Our literature goes back millennia. Oh, but uh, goes back millennia. Well, you know, we like were a, already. We were a highly culturally advanced civilization long before the Federation, or long before uh, humans, really. Well, stop being cave people. <laughs> no, you're very fond of telling me that. Very fond. Which you know, it's hey. I, I love the Bajoran culture. Well, it only makes the accomplishments of uh, humans all the more impressive that they've done so much in so little time. Yeah, but we just never, our ship designs, I mean, they're pretty, but they just don't have the aesthetic value of a nice Bajoran solar sailor. Hmm. There is something to be said for the classics. Hmm. Yeah. It's right about then that uh, you come to a junction, and because I find it funny, walking around the corner is one Mr. Jensen. And yes, Williams, I expect you to talk to yourself. This is your challenge for today. All right. Oh, uh, <laughs> Commander Williams. Com Commander Lee, you look different. Yes, uh, I'm not entirely certain about it myself, but uh, if, if I'm going to be joining the captain or commodore on a, a hovel, hollow novel, I suppose that it's only appropriate that I dress the part. There's a, there's a hollow novel? So, so I'm told, yes. And Williams will cut in and say, no. So I, I get it right. Senior staff only. Listen, if you, um, if you want a really great one, I picked up Falling Love Slave 15 the last time we were at DSD. I thought they were only up to 10. <laughs> it's an advanced copy, like an advanced, advanced copy. Mm. Didn't the Commodore restrict your holodeck privileges for exactly that reason? I have to go. <laughs> Jensen leaves. <laughs> Have a nice day, Jensen. Excellent. Yeah, bye. Uh, so, uh, RJ, are you going to do anything about that or? <sighs> Not for another few hours. Fair enough. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of the Commodore, though, um, I, I don't want to. I don't want to overstep my bounds, but you know her a good deal better than I do. How is uh, how has she been holding up recently? Oh, Commodore's rock solid. I mean, you know, anybody would grapple with what happened, but that's that's the burden of command. And she's up for it. I know you guys haven't really been getting on lately. I suppose that you could say that, yes. Um... I wasn't in her position. I didn't know the situation, but I can't deny that there's some resentment on my part. Well, I can I can see that, but if I could offer maybe a little bit of insight, we well, I hate to come back to it, but you sort of get to certain realities when you're when you're out here um, the for me it was the war I'm getting through it now but I got very used to the idea of people dying as a natural course of conflict this was just a very big conflict. I, I'm not saying that I would do the same thing if I had it to do again. 
I was in command of one of the sections of the ship. But the bottom line is, at the end of the day, we didn't have all the information, and I trust her. So it may not be morally right, but from a a sort of brutal arithmetic, it was tactically acceptable. But that's one of the reasons, Tobin, that you're so important here. You're vital to this ship. Because sometimes someone like me can't see those other options. And we need someone like you to shine a light on them. Well, I very much appreciate that sentiment, RJ. But um, even the emissary, when he was confronted with a crashed Dominion ship and had to sacrifice a runabout crew and several of the officers on his command in order to secure it and bring it back to the Federation, saving tens of millions of lives in the course of the Dominion War because we were able to explore Dominion technology and in fact use that very same ship in a, uh, an intelligence operation to destroy a Kester Cell White facility. Even he recognized that sometimes those sacrifices have to be made. And I know that. I will just say this though. Commodore Archuleta said when we met in the mess hall recently, that uh, I'm an idealist, and she's right. But the people who founded the Federation dreamed of a, a cooperative enterprise between innumerable species, many of which had been at each other's throats for decades and centuries. They dreamed of people working together to explore everything out there and everything in here, binding together and through their differences, understanding themselves better, that they could put aside everything that they were and become something new together. The people who founded the Federation were idealists. And if you don't have something of that aspirational spirit in you, and I know that you do, I don't think you should be wearing this uniform. No, that's fair. I, I agree. I agree. But I think we all have to recognize that well the there are forces that don't share those ideals won't share those ideals or can't share those ideals and between them and the idealists that keep the flame burning are soldiers And I think Thank that's actually, that, I think it's actually about then that you arrive in front of the holodeck. The door is already open. Oh, you ready to cast some fireballs? They're not actually fireballs. They're coherent tetrion emissions that are surrounded in a quasi-magnetic field. And it's only this sort of affectation of the program and this fantasy realm that makes them appear to be fire. But the, that's beside the point. They, they, they explode. Yes, that's fireballs. That's what I said, fireballs. <laughs> All right. right, so uh, you all step into the holodeck, and waiting for you is uh, Petty Officer Zeke or, and the Commodore. And uh, for those who uh, can't see you on screen right now, Dag, what uh, what is Zeke in? You're also probably muted because you're doing motions, but you're muted. Oh, hey, everybody. Yeah, Zeke is playing a dragonborn druid tonight, and he is wearing the uh, customary uh, clothing that the computer Renaissance Fair Template 4 uh, printed out for him. So he's got a nice gray cloak, very furry around the hood, uh, and standard uh, green peasant's clothing, because that's like his favorite color is green. <sighs> And giant boots made out of branches and leaves. 
Nice. And uh, what about you, Commodore? Uh, so Bree is a paladin this evening, and um, she's wearing underneath a suit of silver armor with large um, pauldrons on the shoulder. Um, she is wearing kind of like a goldish hue chainmail one piece, and then, of course, uh armor boots no helmet she has a shield and a sword now is this a bastard sword a short sword a long sword it is um we'll say it's a short sword also she usually wears her hair up but tonight she's decided to let it down have some fun <laughs> all right and that's what uh williams and lee that's what you see when you walk in wow i didn't see that under any of the the Renaissance Fair templates, Commodore. But I want to thank you for allowing me to join you tonight. <laughs> well, uh, Zeke, you, you've you been doing a great job. And um, I think all of the senior staff wanted to get to know you a little better. So you're more than welcome. Whoop, whoop. By the way, that's not real fur, is it? No, no, no. This, uh, this came out of the replicator. Uh, I know better. If it was real fur, Yvette would be all over it. And it's hard sharing a quarters with something that's kind of like a velociraptor. So, no. You mean kind of like a velociraptor? She's not from Earth. So, not a velociraptor. Fair point. Nice to see you guys. Yes, you guys look uh, great. <laughs> Glad to see we weren't the only ones that dressed up. Uh, Although I did require that you dress up. So. <laughs> yeah. I got the sense from the invitation. Yes, ma'am. Right. Uh, this is it then, isn't it? I don't think we had anybody else joining us. I didn't, I didn't see anybody else RSVPing. No, given Commander Rest's feelings regarding holograms, uh, I don't think he was going to show up. Right. Yeah, I can't imagine him having fun in one of these <laughs> so what do we need to do uh call up the arts uh load the program how we do this uh computer oh what did i name this thing again computer load file uh, fantasy adventure two. All right. So the holodeck begins to hum and a figure begins to appear, uh, before you. Now it doesn't actually change the environment just yet. So you're still within the holodeck, but a humanoid appears before you. Um, they are a Zanette. They have a blue uniform on a rank of Lieutenant commander. Uh, they have blue skin, uh, almost talon-like fingers. Uh, their hair is prismatic with two hair clips uh, done in pigtails. And as they materialize, they look around and say, please state the nature of the role-playing emergency. Emergency? No, oh, it, it, it's here. something I have to say every time someone calls me up. Are you our host this evening? Well, yes, I am your game master for this evening. I I am Paladin Bree Archuleta. I see. I see. To purge what, wickedness is my goal. What uh, what god might you fall under today, or are you one oh. of those rare atheist paladins? Um, I follow Marak. Hmm. Interesting. She turns to Mr. Williams, and uh, what about you? You seem to be in a rather strange getup. Oh, why, yes. Um, don't you recognize me? I'm the famous <laughs> bird. R.J. Williams, the scourge of taverns from Highport to Suda. And she points at your accordion. You're not actually going to play that, are you? You better believe I am. Oh, dear. And she looks over at Zeke. So, I was going to make a comment about Dragonborn, but I see you've already done the whole thing. Droop? Yeah. 
Was the cloak that gave it away? Nah, it's the the boots you got on. Oh, yeah. <sighs> I knew the barbarian template in the replicator was not reliable. Got to fix that. I think it looks good. Then you, Mr. Bajoran, uh, let me guess, let me guess. You look like someone who arrives precisely when they're meant to. Uh, wizard. Well, let's just say I'm never late. Yes. I see. Well, uh, is anyone entirely new to this experience? I would hate to throw you in to the deep end if you are new. Well, I must admit... Uh... I'm more of a thespian than somebody who is interested in improv. The closest thing I've done to a hollow novel is some acting back in the academy. That was a long time ago. Well, you shall find yourself right at home. For tonight's adventure begins rather serenely. And she raises her left hand, snaps her fingers, and the holodeck shimmers around you to reveal a town that is made up of white stone, uh, thatched roofs, lots of archways, lots of intricate designs in the windows and on the sides of the buildings. Um, everything is white, even the massive sort of tree in the middle of the town square that you materialize into. And the Game Master Hologram says, this is the town of Silverwood. Silverwood is a... For lack of a better term, it's a serene town out on the border of the Forgotten Realms. And your task today will be to explore a problem that the town of Silverwood is facing. Now, I'm not going to tell you what that problem is because half the fun of this experience is finding your own way. So I will simply point you in the direction of that inn over there. And uh, she points over at an inn, and above the door of the inn is not a sign, but literally a rusty bucket just hanging by the handle. <laughs> and she says, uh, probably no surprise, but that is the rusty bucket. You will find a inn master, tavern keeper inside. They should be able to get you going on the right path. And should you need me, I'm always around. And then she sort of shimmers out of reality. But you get the sense she's probably hanging around for narration's sake. So are there any existing prejudices within the town that Bree would know of? That you would know of? Um, you know, that's an interesting question. Uh, why don't you roll me a insight and command difficulty of one? Ooh, interesting. Ooh, so you do know that this is primarily an elven town. And for those who don't know elves, basically they're elves. I, like, I, I would explain what an elf is, but we'd be here all day. <laughs> um, it's a primarily elven town. Now, there are humans. There are orcs. There are dragonborn. There are other races here, but it's primarily elven, uh, which means that most of the people here are maybe a little uptight, a little snooty. Um, but the complication is that you know for a fact that they are very prejudiced against Ratkin for whatever reason. So it's probably a good idea that a uh, certain security officer did not RSVP. Okay, cool. Wow, this looks amazing. So realistic. <laughs> what do you guys think? Well, I have a question. Yeah. Well, was the inn just called the bucket before the bucket rusted? <laughs> Why don't we go ask ourselves? Probably called the hanging bucket. I mean, it's a bucket that's hanging and it just rusted over time. Maybe. The iron bucket, perhaps? You think they have grog there, like Rakagino? You could probably, yeah, I mean, I'm sure you could order whatever. But let's try and keep it like on theme, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, where was the tavern? It's it's right over there. Okay. 
So your party walks over to the inn and uh, the door is already open and inside you see the stereotypical fantasy tavern that everyone has ever seen in their life. And for those who may have not actually had this experience before, basically imagine a dimly lit uh, large room with a bunch of tables and benches. Uh, the light is provided not by LEDs, not by electricity, but by literal lanterns and a fireplace. Um, the clientele, uh, there's some that are, you know, jovial, standard bar sort of attendees. Um, there's quite a number of mysterious people lurking, lurking in the shadows. You know, it, it's a staple of every fantasy and you got to have one brooding guy in the corner. Um, but what really catches your attention is the barkeeper themselves. Uh, the barkeeper is, uh, for lack of a better descriptor, they are a tiefling. Now, if you're not familiar with what a tiefling is, uh, imagine a red-skinned, uh, maybe about six foot tall, uh, humanoid individual with a tail. Uh, but what really stands out about the tiefling is they have large curved horns that sort of sweep out to the sides, then start to curve back, do a loop, and the point straight, point straight back up. And their eyes are orbs of blue like pure blue and uh as you come in they sort of shout over at you it says ah you must be the adventurers i was expecting please come sit at the bar Me? Oh, let's right. go <laughs> brie will uh happily saunter over and slide into a seat so uh what's your poison i'll have a just a regular ale regular ale and for you, pointing at Dag, or at Zeke. Muted. To expect one to order poison, like, weird. Can I just get a cup of grog? We call that ale here, but sure. Points at Williams. You? Oh. If we're going to keep it authentic, I'll take an elven fire wine. Ooh, Elven Firewine. Daring today, I see. And then uh, he looks at uh, Lee for a moment, doesn't say anything, and says, I know exactly what to get you. And uh, they begin preparing uh, for Archuleta and Vassar. Or not, sorry, Zeke. I'm being tripped up on my own overlay. Hey! It's great. So Zeke and Archuleta, um, you guys get poured a tankard of ale, and those are just slid across the bar to you. Uh, Mr. Williams, uh, they literally just give you a bottle of Elven Fire Wine. It's dated 301 on the front. As for Mr. Lee, uh, what they do, and you sort of see a little bit of the holodeck magic at work, is they have coffee, and they pour it into maybe about uh, a glass that's maybe about two to three inches. They put a few ice cubes in it. Then they add in some sort of a cream, uh, some sort of a vodka, and then they add a little bit of milk into that mixture, and they swirl it up and slide it across to you. They've been going through your replicator logs again, haven't they? <laughs> no, I pretty much drink water and fire wine, but uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm an explorer, so uh, let's, let's see what this is. Uh, <clears throat> they, did they mix you a white Russian? Yes. And when you taste it, uh, Lee, I don't know if you've ever had a white Russian in real life, but um, it is a novel experience, or maybe that's just my bias talking because I love white Russians. Um, it is almost like a alcoholic frappuccino in that it's a cool coffee that goes down very smooth. And you can definitely taste the there's enough of a tint of liquor in it that it's not overbearing. But you're able to tell that if this was real, like two or three of these, you'd be on your ass. You know, I, I wonder what it would be like if they made this with Roctogino instead of weak human coffee. Oh, man. I'm going to try that when we get back. That sounds amazing. Mm. Is this, is this good. Synth hall? Are you Can asking the barkeeper? <laughs> yeah, why not? Barkeeper just looks at you funny and says, Sent the hall? The hell's that? Mm -hmm. Cheers. Brie will like toast with them or put her put her glass out to toast. If you 
if you take a white Russian and you, you take out the coffee and you add rack to Gino, you end up with a Klingon Russian. So is it a wharf? From oh. Minsk? I don't know. Oh. You guys know he's from Russia? No? Would it be more uh, like a Roshenko? Uh, what a, a white Roshenko, yeah. Hey! That's really clever. That's why you're the, you get the big bucks. I'm going to give you momentum for that because we're making that can in a white Roshenko. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bree will kind of turn to the, the barkeep. Be like, so, you said you were expecting us. Yeah, I uh, put out a call for adventures about a week ago. I'm glad you're here. So, uh, be on the level with me. Uh, is this your first gig? And she kind of looks over at everybody. Or is this, uh, I can just sort of point you in a direction and you'll figure it out. Um, well, you know, I know my armor isn't really scratched or anything. And I may have, like, inherited it recently but um <clears throat> i think uh, i think you could just point us somewhere Ooh. right she yeah kind of looks to the yeah group. Roll we can me, figure this out <laughs> roll me a presence command difficulty of one and you would have a focus <laughs> can i try to assist this by making my very best mean face just like a you may assist with your own presence command. That's so I'm so bad at these. I rolled, but it didn't make a sound. It did. It did. Oh, yeah. And actually, because I think it is actually thematic, like every time you have to roll in character, what happens is what materializes in front of you, like above your hand, is an <gasps> actual d20. And every time you need to make a roll that the Game Master calls for, and part of this is the Game Master calling for roles, we're just translating it into STA mm -hmm. terms. But yeah, like she's like, roll up persuasion, and you get a d20, you roll it, and that's how we'll flavor things. Ooh, I love it. Uh, but uh, with four successes overall, I believe that brings you to a total of four momentum. Very nice. So the, uh, the barkeep just sort of nods approvingly and says, all right, we'll forgo the killing of Ratkin in my basement to test your abilities. I will point you in the right direction. About uh, three weeks ago, uh, some, let's call them cultists, moved into the crypt outside of town. Mm. And uh, they've been doing something unsavory in there. I don't know what exactly because the people that have gone into the crypt haven't come back out. And if I may, do you know what these people are cultists of? They Some are, sort of fire deity or? They are cultists of, uh, hold on. And uh, you see the barkeep rummaging behind the bar for a piece of paper. Uh, does this mean anything to you? And she shows you a symbol. And the symbol is a dragon's head that is uh, sort of wrapped around this image of a globe, perhaps some sort of a world, and the teeth are almost like clamping around the world itself. Almost like, uh, what's the, the big snake that goes around the world? Um, Oberos? Yes, Oberos? that one. Oberos? Yeah. Okay. Cool. This is probably going to make me sound a little bit like, um, uh, well, Lieutenant Commander Zero, yeah. but, um, uh, Master Chief, do you have any idea what this might be? I mean, this seems a bit like it's in your wheelhouse. Dragon. Just. Dragon eating itself? No. I don't. I. No. What are you implying? Dragon born? I, I'm trying to figure out how this universe works. It, no, yeah, no, I, I'm, playing a drag, I'm playing a dragonborn, but I, I actually, I don't know what that symbol is. Sorry. Uh, might I interject? The Ouroboros or snake eating itself is a symbol of rebirth. And given the fact that it's wrapped around this planet, I, I mean, <clears throat> our world, I can only assume that means some kind of trouble is on the way rebirth William, inside of a crypt that 
doesn't sound good, but <clears throat> yeah, lots of lots of fun oh, things. Boy, lots of spiding. So Williams, uh, above your hand appears a d20, and the ephemeral voice of your game master says, please roll a scholar test for me. And for an STA terms, that's going to be a control and a command. Difficulty of one. You are also muted. Heard that. Heard that? Yep. There we go. Am I back? Okay. Back yeah. me there's, a, there's a toggle yeah. on my toggle on my thing here. All right. So, um, so hey, GM Power Systems. <laughs> he's, he's not here. I've got it. He's got to wave the flag. Uh oh. Interesting. Interesting. So it is a one difficulty. So you do pass. Uh, so what happens is uh, the game master sort of whispers in your ear. This is a cult designed to bring back Zatherth the Great, a terrible dragon that plagued these lands long, long ago. And the complication oh. is that as this, you know, ephemeral voice whispers in your ear, uh, one of the uh, other occupants of the tavern comes up to the bar and sort of pushes between... Uh, Williams and Archuleta and knocks the entire bottle of fire wine onto Williams. <gasps> oh. All right, tap, so what tap, I'm, just, did, right? I'm just going <laughs> to tap him on his shoulder and say, um, excuse me, what, what was your name? Well, I didn't give you my name, says an orc. Or, all right, may, may I know your name? Oh. My name is Fuck You. All right. Do you want um, me to spell it? Can computer, you even write? Computer, delete the mouth you work. Mm, the game master says, "Aw, but I worked really hard on his character." Oh, and this, the hologram fine. of the the. Do you, do you want to rescind the order? Yeah, belay the order. Okay. It's part of the fun. You can't just delete. My, I know. Characters you don't like, I know. RJ, I, I, know. Like... I know. That's why. I, that's why I rescinded it. It's. It's. So are we gonna to beat him up now or what? I'm, I'm well, the orc is definitely one. squaring up, ready, like he's looking for a fight. Well, I'm going to. <laughs> okay. And again, this is classic D and D. I put you in a tavern. The first thing you do is start yeah, a bar, bar fight. fight. Happens all the time. <sighs> So how are you uh, going about attacking this individual? Are you just going to give him a punch? You're going to stab him with your sword? What are you? What are you doing? Um, no sword. <laughs> no sword yet. You're asking me, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to try and punch him. <laughs> All right, that's going to be a daring security difficulty Sweet. of one, and he will oppose. Oh, captain! My captain. I'm just going to. Look back at Zeke and say, "See here, I'm not a security officer. I'm a bird." Can I use Starfleet protocols. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that would be quite the stretch. evasive action. No. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I believe. Hey, two successes. Look at nice. that. Let's see how well the orc does. <laughs> what the? <laughs> <laughs> if this was D D, that would have been amazing. But this is not D D. This is Star Trek Adventures. That is horrible. <laughs> it's still amazing for us. So Archuleta, you go in with a gut punch, maybe, and you hit him so hard that not only does he double over as you knock the wind out of him, but he actually vomits a little bit. Like not on you, but onto the floor, just vomits a little bit. And his knees buckle and shake, and eventually he just collapses to the ground in the fetal position. Remind me never to pick a fight with a Commodore. Damn. Um, she'll kind of like straighten her armor and be like, "Computer, raise difficulty to like level medium." <laughs> and the game master voice whispers, "You are already on hard mode." All right. No. <laughs> um. Maybe okay, noted. Uh, I would turn over to Williams. Uh, so, Williams, do you think it's a good thing you decided to fist fight with 
Commander Rast and not Commodore Archuleta? I mean, Commander XO, CO, end result's the same. Wait, you guys My hand gets raised. I, 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 I have to call that into question, RJ. I'm sorry. What the heck's going on with the senior staff? Well, you're, just, you're, lucky. <laughs> you're, just, you're lucky that I'm a bird right now. <laughs> hey, look, look, we can get another betting ring going around. I know Maddox isn't here to skim money off the top anymore. <laughs> oh my god. You get a, probably get a new a few slips of Latin out of that. I mean, I don't know. No, let's do it, know. RJ. I I'd, I'd, I'd hate to uh <laughs> I'd hate to embarrass the Commodore. Hard mode. Did you just hear her? Hard mode. Yeah. All right. Beat beat Jensen and Fisticuffs and then come back and talk to me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we have to bring this up again. <laughs> I promise You're to... the chief of security. You're supposed to protect me from stuff like that. So well, job. I'm sorry. When I shot at him, I missed. So that what you're saying good. is that Jensen beat both of you? Twice. I don't Why do you think he got promoted? That's not my recollection. <laughs> So the, the barkeep just <laughs> the barkeep just sort of leads over and says, um, I don't want to be the bearer of the bad news, but do you know who that is? And points at the orc. Yeah, he's the guy who spilled fire wine all over my blouse. Mm, yeah. Someone really important. Yeah, he's kind of the son of the mayor. You might want to go do the whole crip thing before he goes and... Uh, Brings back a lot of guards to kick your ass. Sure, but just like one, one more thing first, though. Can I get an uh, an ale, real fast? Sure, just, kid. Like, just, just real fast. Yeah, just slides you a tankard. And uh, or just sort of go over to the unconscious or go. Hey, nice to meet you. Let me buy you a drink, and pour it on him. <laughs> just pours it on him, and you know he whimpers a little bit, but. All right, what? now we can go. You almost what a defeated fan. the mayor's son. Mm. Do, do what you a fantastic like, first impression. Do you like level up now? And the game master whispers, no, slaying a single orc does not count as good experience. I mean, I haven't played since the academy. I don't know. All right, well, let's find this cult. Um, right. So. So, <clears throat> yeah. Outside of town. Yeah. Zathrath, the dragon. That's the symbol that they're... It's a very powerful, uh, bad, bad, bad dragon. Um, lived a long time ago, and they're probably trying to bring it back. And he'll lean Fantastic. over to see he's going to say, I know these things because I have a bird. I got you. Yeah. Smart guy. Um, so Brie will like lean over again. Did you, so you said outside of town, was there like a direction? You said you'd point us in a direction. So They point uh, as if it really matters. They point out the door and say, go down the square here, take a left, take the main road out of town. You're going to go about a mile and then on your right will be the crypt. All right. Thank you. And here's payment. They look at whatever you slap down. This is a joke, right? No, <laughs> this is a joke. So Hamlet goes over to Ophelia and says, I'm thinking about taking up art. So I'm going to draw a picture of you. She says, okay, well, what kind of pencil are you going to use? 2B or not 2B? It takes a okay. moment for the barkeep to process this. It takes a moment. Just get the hell out of the bar. Free drinks. Free will lean down and affectionately pat the orc's cheek as she steps over his body and heads for the door. <laughs> yeah, I could have taken him. Excuse me, Mr. Lee. Um, what kind of a distance unit is a mile? I don't know. That sounds like some horribly archaic means of... 
discussing distances, one with inherently irrational basis. Right. Not some really sort of arbitrary. logical, yes, not some sort of logical delineation between, you know, factors of 10 or 100. Um, hope, think of it this way, Zeke. And does not answer the question. That's so, because I, I don't know how to answer the question. I, I, I've never heard of this mile before. It must one, have been phased out hundreds of years ago. Long time ago. 1.609 kilometers. Oh, that's all. All right. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Williams. Is that something you would know because you're a bard? No, it's something I would know because I studied history. Because he's bard man. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. You took the uh, archaeology class at the academy, and I was in um, weaving. So, yeah, oh, no, that was I one took, of the classes took... we didn't have together. I took I, I took weaving too, but I, I we weren't in the same class. You were in advanced weaving. I was in remedial weaving. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I bet those cultists are going. Wow, they're talking about their classes. We're gonna totally get away with this. <laughs> well, um, Zeke, would you like to lead the way? One mile yeah, that we, way. We go out to the square, head left, and take a mile. And I forget what happens after that, but that's how far we go. All right. So you guys proceed out of the bar. You go down past the uh, big old white uh, lavender tree uh, angle to the left. And you see the gates of the town. You head out of the gate. And as you get on the outskirts of the town, you maybe hear the guards whispering, Hey, did you hear? Mayor's kid got whacked. I'm assuming you all keep moving. Yes. <laughs> and I do it again. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> you keep moving. Uh, you head uh, down what is essentially a dirt road. Uh, actually, why they're well kept dirt road. Uh, very packed dirt. Uh, no an weeds in the middle. Road. Yeah, it's an elven dirt road. Like there, There's no weeds in the middle of this path. Perfectly flat. Perfectly flat. It's good stuff. Um, but sort of surrounding on either side of the path are these almost like telescopic or tunnel forming tree branches. So it's almost like you have just walked into a green corridor. Um, but you walk and it doesn't take long, like maybe 10, 15 minutes. And the canopy above you opens up and you emerge onto a almost like a grassy hilly plain that sort of stretches on and on and on. Um, but directly ahead of you is a fork in the path. The path itself continues forward through the grassy hills, whereas the right path, as you look to the right, you see what is essentially an ornate elven building um, with, we'll say, Corinthian columns. So there's a, there's a fusion of architecture styles here. Um, there's Corinthian columns that surround what appear to be the entrance to some sort of mausoleum or a crypt. And what you're noticing is that there are no guards, no cultists, no nothing. Uh, but there is a sign in Elvish. I would presume that based on my supposed in-game knowledge, I would be able to interpret this sign. Can I attempt to do so? Uh, and I will talk to the sky. I'll direct yeah. that question to the sky. The sky gives you a d20, and you may roll a reason and a science difficulty of two. While he's ro while he's rolling in character, Bree will kind of turn to RJ and be like, did you realize that it was an elven city, but the mayor was an orc? Like, the mayor's son was an orc? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean... It's very welcoming. He might be adopted. He's not welcoming at all, Zeke. He was rude as hell. Well, he, oh, no, not him. The city. I mean, if the mayor's an elf and he's yeah. got an adopted orcish son, that's really welcoming. I like that. Who's a right. who's a dick? Yeah. yeah, yeah he's adopted. <laughs> not an excuse to be an asshole. Period. 
Oh, Lord. But Lee, since you did succeed there with two successes, uh, yes, you see that this is the Weatherton. Uh, this is the Weatherton Crypt. And based on your knowledge, uh, I would say, and this is the Game Master talking, I would say that you know that there are powerful elven warriors that have achieved very much in their lifetimes that are ensconced here. Hmm. Well, um, I suppose you all heard that voice from the sky telling me that there are powerful elven warlords or something like that in this crypt. I'm still not entirely sure what an elf is, but uh, it's like a human, but pointy. It's like a Vulcan. Oh, so they've learned how to suppress their emotions. Um, More, I mean, they're kind of just boring, but I don't know. So You'll know like, when like, you so meet like, one. Like You'll never. Hey. <laughs> I, I tend to agree with Lee. Vulcans, man, don't have a. It's just no fun. They're a very nuanced group of people. It's just. Anyway. Anyway. Space elves. That's Vulcans. <laughs> so, uh, I'm assuming you guys are going to go into the spooky crypt. Yes, and I'm going to draw my sword with my shield in front of me. Yeah, what's uh, what's the marching order here? I'm happy to go first. I will go second, because I am very tall. All right. Uh, we may be able to talk our way in here. What are you going to tell them? We want to join their cult? You'd be surprised how often that works. Well, we do have a okay. dragonborn here. Go right he ahead, RJ. <laughs> I'm not All right. in a cult. All right, how about this? She's going to grab RJ's shirt and drag him up in front, mm -hmm. spin him in front, and then be like, I'll be right behind you. Let's talk. Oh, I feel better already. Yeah. All right. She pats and... him on the shoulder. Good. As you enter the crypt, I can put you on this map and hopefully dynamic lighting works today. So you each should see uh, unique things over here to the left. And you should be uh, able to move not through the darkness, but uh, down the path that you are currently on. The actual entrance oh. of the mausoleum, uh, it's a set of stairs that lead down uh, and then angle to the left, go down further and angles to the left again. Right, well, I will. Refreshing all 20. Hold on. Okay. As I will sort of step forward. And uh, oh, goodness, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Williams, as you step out from the stairway, what you see is a 15 foot, and I'm, I know I'm using feet, not meters, but that's D&D. &D, uh, 15 foot by about 30 foot um, area. Uh, some sort of a room. Of course, it's a room. Duh. Uh, there's two columns in the center of it uh, that go from floor to ceiling, uh, all stone. And it's sort of inlaid into alcoves, uh, two on each side of the room. There are elven statues, presumably the warriors that Lee talked about. Um, but what's relevant to you is there are two tieflings that are standing on either side of an entryway that seems to or a corridor that goes further into the crypt now they don't seem to have noticed you yet however the game master sort of whispers in your ear i need you to roll me a stealth check please and d20s appear you're going to be rolling a fitness and security difficulty of two oh i'm not going to be quiet and the d20 just disappears <laughs> And uh, yes, I will approaching approaching the uh, the cultists. Mm -hmm. I will uh, hold a hand up um, and say, "Greetings, brothers." And the uh, the cultists almost like. Not ceremonially, but they just sort of 
pull out the daggers from their scabbard, you know, not pointing them at you, but they got it ready, and they say, Who the hell are you? I am a fellow supplicant. <laughs> Summoned here through dreams by my master, Zathrith the Great. Game Master Whispers, I need you to roll me a uh, deception check, please. And that's going to be a, let's call this a presence and a command for you. Difficulty of three. Uh, And you know what? Let's make it interesting. I'll spend some threat to increase the complication range to 17 to 20. Awesome. We do have some momentum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spend one of those. Uh, let me just check to see if there's any. Uh, no. Okay. You know what? Let's, let's spend three momentum for two. Okay. Oh. That is... No complications, no complications, yeah, so just one success. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, the cultists sort of look at each other, and then this time they actually point their daggers at you and says, why don't you run back home, kid? Play your instrument somewhere safe. Sneak will come down the stairs behind him mm-hmm. and uh, yell in Draconic hoping that they don't speak Draconic and just sort of jibber-jabbering because Zeke also does not speak Draconic. But he's basically like trying to be super creepy. Dad, you can't just speak Klingon like that. You got to give us a bit of run up there. Hey, I speak Klingon. It's fine. They don't know it. (laughs) So you do this. A D20 appears for you and the Game Master laughs and says, go ahead and roll me a deception there, buddy. Then for you, it's going to be a similar presence command difficulty of three. Um, can Can I try to assist him by spinning around surprised, dropping to my knees and sort of prostrating myself towards or before the avatar of Zathrith? Yes, but I'm gonna make the complication range higher. I mean, please. amazing. <laughs> um, I don't. Does Zeke have a, a specialty for this? No, but you are activating him, so you could give him a focus if you wanted to, or a talent. Well, I wouldn't even know what kind of a talent to give him. He's good with focuses. Not so good with talents. Um. Let's just do a focus that's like intimidating. Intimidation, I'll write it in for you. And here we go. Nothing. Nothing. (laughs) Unfortunately, because he didn't get a success there, uh, those two don't matter. So it's at this point that the cultists actually begin moving towards you, Williams. And we're going to do that classic D&D thing where we will roll initiative quote unquote Mm. uh so the way we're gonna handle this is i would like it uh go ahead and move uh archuleta and lee move where you would be uh in relation to this thing um so normally in D &D, uh your movement would be 30 feet uh we're gonna treat 30 feet as a movement of medium range because in uh star trek adventures ranges are close medium long extreme so you can move anywhere within medium range as one of your actions on your turn. Um, for those of you with ranged weapons, uh, Lee, for example, your fireball is a medium range only. Uh, so what you can do is use the ruler to check the distances to make sure that you are able to hit you know, certain things. Um, the other thing is that if you are doing a melee attack, quote unquote, uh, you do have to be next to them. Because I don't think any of you have, shall we say, a uh, 
a long spear or a halibird, you know, something on a pole. Um, but yeah, uh, the way we'll handle initiative, quote unquote, is just go ahead and roll me a number of challenge die equal to your security score. I just want to say I can't see roll 20 right now. It's not loading in. So if you can move me. Yeah, I gotcha. As close to in front of Williams as possible. I gotcha. Thank there you. you go. All right. So uh, in turn order, if you could write in uh, your total results for your number. And then uh, do you know what Archuleta's security is off the top of your head? No, hold on. No, I got it. Uh, okay. Three. So, she okay. rolled. so what am I rolling for initiative again? I'm sorry. Three challenge dice. Okay. Okay. So let's see. So Zeke got a four. Archuleta got a one. Williams got a two. Hey, look at that. One, two, three, four. All right, let's roll for them there, cultists. Uh, that's a one and a one. So we'll make you 1.5. Make you 1.75. Sort by descending. All right, so Zeke, you are the first one up. How would you like to proceed? I turn into a bear. You turn into a <laughs> That's not going to help, Zeke. Why not? I got claws. You're, you're about half a foot tall. Wait, what? No, no, you're this adorable. is just a. I'm a bear. It's actually Vassar, yes, you are. but just he's such a pretending precious, to be strong, Zeke. big bear. <laughs> he's a good brave boy. bear, there. I hear they're like dogs back on Earth, really, really fluffy and pedible. And they're stuff. not. No, no. A dog scarier? Yeah, I bet they are. You met my cellet, right? Yeah, that's like a Vulcan kitty cat. Yeah, but imagine that, like, the size of a runabout. <laughs> Wait, I'm the size of a runabout? <laughs> no, I'm. You were an Earth Bear, th yes. <laughs> I'm spending threat to make you literally a teddy bear because I find it funny <laughs> as hell. Wait. There's something wrong with the hollow emitters. I'm not supposed to be this tall. It's short, but whatever. Uh, fine. Let's get this thing started. So what would you like to do, Zeke? You have turned into a teddy bear, but probably oh, a, a deadly teddy, a deadly teddy bear. That's a free action. Awesome. I'm gonna leap at the throat of the nearest cultist. Sure, go ahead and roll me an opposed daring security, please. It's Chucky all over. Yeah, I was going to say, I was trying to remember the name of the movie. And uh, can I be an intimidating teddy bear? If you give me the momentum, yes. Um, all right. I'm an intimidating teddy bear. <laughs> Great use of momentum and threat. Oh, my God. I'm not an intimidating teddy bear. <laughs> I'm never playing this game again. Let's uh let's see what he rolls because he just needs uh, he doesn't get a success. But okay, so because you rolled a complication, here's what happens. Zeke, you in teddy bear form, quote unquote, leap at the cultist, you know, with your claws, quote unquote, ready to swipe his face off. The cultist literally catches you by the neck and goes to stab you a few times with his dagger. Help! Animal cruelty. <laughs> so Zeke. I need you to take one stress of damage for me. Ow! That's my third kidney. Ow! Are the safety the, features on? I would say, actually, that now that you're being stabbed, Zeke, this actually hurts. What? Hey, the holodeck's doing a really good job of making me feel pain and bleeding. Uh, it shouldn't be able to do that. These aren't like upgrades? You mean I'm actually ow? Hey, yeah, yeah. Ow! Well, Lee, with all that going on, what would you like to do? Can I target a fireball at the second cultist <laughs> so it will not engulf Zeke, hopefully? You certainly uh, can. Over the shoulders of the other two? Okay. 
So that I will funny. say though that if you roll a complication, you're hitting Zeke. He's a teddy bear. He'll be fine. Animal cruelty. Uh, for you, that's going to be a uh, control security difficulty of two. Oh, that's not going to go well. <clears throat> oh boy. Well, since I have already flavored these fireballs as what was it? Coherent Tetrion emissions. Can I say that this is that subspace dynamic supplies? <laughs> sure. Sure. Prep work is beautiful. <laughs> hey, two successes. Very nice. Yeah, go ahead and roll me five challenge die worth of damage. So yeah, you conjure up a fireball and you fling it at the cultist. And the cultist's eyes sort of widen to almost dinner pan or like dinner saucer size as he is caught in this engulfing flame and he emolates to the point that when the fires die back down, there is nothing, not even bone remaining of the cultist. Oh, I thought the Varon T disruptor was cruel. Ugh. Wow. Next time I want to be the wizard. Well, Williams, you have uh your buddy, Zeke, getting uh, strangled at the moment. What are you going to do? Help me. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll, I'll get up off my knees. And uh, so he's clearly been stabbed and is actually injured. Mm -hmm. I am a small teddy bear. Computer freeze program. Nothing happens. Oh, good. Um, great. So uh, I'm going to draw my dagger and move to attack the, actually, let me just, let me move my. I use cutting words. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to use a cutting implement. Yes. All right. Well, uh, go ahead. Another daring security opposed. We'll see how he does. Well, he's got a crit. Just check my. I mean, I believe in you, though so I would find it very funny if this cult has killed all of you. All right, uh, two successes. I'm going to say tie goes to the actor. So yeah, Williams, go ahead and roll me your uh, challenge die for a dagger, which should be six challenge die. Yeah. And five, because daggers are vicious. That's actually six, seven, eight damage. So where do you stab him exactly? Um in the neck so you go to stab him in the neck and uh immediately because you hit like the actual artery there um blood just spurts out and sprays over all of you your face your costume everything and it feels warm and viscous and it's just the most disgusting thing you've ever experienced and you know he lets go of zeke so zeke you fall to the ground and the cultist sort of grabs his neck and goes to the ground and blood still spraying onto Williams. He finally keels over onto the ground, onto his side and just bleeds out twitching to death. Um, sort of turn, turn to Bringo. Did you, did you write this? Uh, no. She's going to have to tap her comm badge. And, uh, who would be like in charge? Rass, probably. Probably. This is uh, the Commodore to Rast. Can you hear us? Rast doesn't answer, but someone does. And it is a voice. It's a very uh, reptilian voice, a very deep and low voice, and says, You were foolish to come here. That's the mayor's son? Cast, are you sick? <laughs> there is no um, reply, though. Okay. Williams, We're in a situation. Um, Zeke, come here. I'll, he'll heal you. What, you got, a, you got a med kit over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, like, do healing. Come here. Uh, Commodore, if he's 
legitimately injured, I don't know if any of the affectations of this program are really going to be effective. I am going to stop being a teddy bear now. All right. Can, can he do that? Yeah, he stops being a teddy bear. Okay, well then why can't I heal him? <laughs> well, you can't. Well, have, are you trying? I would like to try, yes. Okay. So yeah, uh, roll me a control in medicine, please. Difficulty of zero. I will assist in that I want to be healed. <laughs> I don't know if that really counts as an assist, but I love the effort all the same. The power of positive thinking, you know? He's just willing himself to be better. All right, so you get two successes. And actually, yeah, Archuleta is sort of the classic paladin lay on hands. Your gauntlet glows for a moment as you uh, sort of put the glowing hand onto the wound of Zeke. And it actually knits up. It actually stops hurting. Like, it completely regenerates like a dermal regenerator would. I am wow. super confused about this holodeck. Wait a Computer arch? No arch. Of course uh, not. I hate holodecks. I'm sorry. I didn't know this was going to happen. It always happens with holodecks. Not like always. This is deck. the first time for this ship. We just dealt too. with a holographic virus. It always happens with holograms. <sighs> okay. You know what I bet it is? I, I, Q. What? Really? I wouldn't be surprised. Although usually he shows his face before he has, decides to fuck with us. Can we, can we have one day where we don't run into gods, crazy virus, hologram things, and I don't know, brain-eating parasite stuff? Can we, can we just have one day? I mean, you chose the life in space, Zeke. You're not wrong. <laughs> no, it's so just, I it's think good. like... There's precedent. There's precedent. What I'm kind of getting here is we need to finish the story. Who's the most right. tanky? Well, I mean, I Commodore. imagine that'd be you, Ironsides. <laughs> right. I'll stand in front. How about that? There's the guy who just took down one dude by throwing a dagger at his throat. Now I know why you're the security aid chief. Chief. I appreciate that, but I'm, I, I guess I'm a bird. I'd I like guess. you to roll me a fitness and con, please. Difficulty will be a one for you, Williams. And there's a reason for this. You do not have a focus, unfortunately. Okay. Hey, one success. So, Williams. Please start playing a little bit on your accordion. And you're like, oh shit, I can actually play the accordion. Of course I can. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a bird. Yeah, so I guess I, oh, uh-oh. So this was fairly spontaneous. Just sort of came on me, the urge to play. Sounds like a rendition of that new Klingon metal that's out. I uh, hope they don't hear you. Can you? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I just... <laughs> is, this, is that the Kitamer accordion? <laughs> Taking um, to threat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I wonder, Marak, my patron. Can a you hear D20 me? appears. And you're going to roll a, let's call this a, as, uh, let's call it an insight and insight and science. Sure, let's do an insight science. Survey? Sure, I'll give it to you. And one success. You actually hear a voice of your supposed god and says, Hello, my child. Are you in need of assistance? Yes. Wait. We are, right? We are. I think that's yes. a safe assumption. Can you guide us forward safely? I cannot see you well. There is an evil presence there. However, 
I believe I can offer directions. Yes, point me to the way of the wickedness and I will smite it. For you, of course. So, uh, what appears is almost like a glowing line that only Archuleta sees that Mm. proceeds down the corridor across from Lee. So down this corridor here. Uh, And you see that it angles to the south on this map, so to the south. And uh, the voice says, follow the lights, my child. As you wish. So I'll I'll actually draw in uh, freehand here. Uh, Let me do it on the map layer so you can actually see it. All right, there's the first bit. And there's the second bit. There you go. Okay. And I tell you so... what, we have been going for an hour. Let's take our 10-minute uh, break there. So we will be back in 10 minutes, everybody. Stick around.
All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, if you're just now tuning in, uh, we are doing a Hollow D and D episode on the holodeck, and uh, things are starting to turn out that maybe more is at play here. But yeah, you guys have finished uh, your first encounter, quote unquote, and uh, you have a glowing trail that leads into the unknown depths of the crypt. How would you like to proceed? Mm. So. I volunteered to go forward okay. first. And then do we want fireball behind us, behind me, and then protect um, the bard with the druid? Bard at the end? Unless being in the end is more dangerous. I don't know. Well, let me ask this because I, I hopefully you can see where I've got you on stream. Yes. So, do you want to proceed further from here, or do you actually want to peek around the corner? I'll peek around the corner. Yeah, you guys can file in behind, however you want. So I'll actually move you right about there. And yeah, uh, what you see, Archuleta, is to your left. There is what appears to be some form of an altar. Uh, oh. lined with candles. Uh, there's a cultist praying there. Uh, but the line doesn't go to the cultist. The line that uh, is illuminating your path goes to your right. Okay. Um, wizard, um, can you cast darkness or anything like that? Can, <laughs> can you like can anyone do that like cast, yes. cast light. I can throw a fireball I, Dark. That's, all, okay. that's all the the GM told me okay um, that is what you call it right if you spend is, me two correct. momentum the GM will help you no, no. <laughs> it's a trap <laughs> uh, how about this RJ Given your tactical training, I, you're not actually a bard. You're a security officer. Can't you just sneak around that corner and stab that one in the neck? That would seem to resolve that problem so we wouldn't have someone behind us. Normally, I wouldn't be so bloodthirsty, but it's a hologram. Don't tell Vassar I said that. He's, it's a different kind of hologram. But, <laughs> but no, he's, he's a sapient being. Now? He's a sapient being. That is not. Oh. I mean, I can. You guys are very different than your senior staff recordings make you out to be. I just want you to, to know that because you're a lot more fun this way. Thanks. Thanks, Zeke. You hear that? You're fun. All right, Thanks, fine. Zeke. And, yeah, just uh... go fucking stab him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right, Williams. I'm going to need you to roll me another uh, fitness security. Or actually, no, let's make this fitness con a uh, difficulty of two. Fitness con. All right. I would take a momentum for that, too. Yeah, I'm oh, definitely going to do that. Uh, let me just take a look. At my, I don't think any of my focuses really apply here. Nope. 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 Uh, all right. Well, bottoms up. Mm. So you succeed, but there's a complication. Okay. Uh, we'll say for sake of argument, uh, Williams, you're managing to get around our Chuleta and about, say, yeah, right about there, maybe a square ahead. Uh, when you step on something and you look down... You have literally stepped on like a rat, and the rat has let out a horrifying screech in pain. Um, but the cultist does notice you, so you have an you have an opportunity to act here. Um, but if you do not silence him, let's just say that could be bad. Well, let's silence him. All right, daring security difficulty of one, because I'm assuming you're going for that stabby stab, stabbing, stabbing away. All right. And I forgot I actually have a pro for this. Um, I am going to um, 
spend my determination okay for uh, the the extra successes okay uh, I'm gonna tap my value um, and the threat whatever it takes okay uh, as I stab this other poor sod in the neck sensing a theme three successes he's gonna need to get a double crit to beat you. He has not rolled a double crit. So yeah, go ahead and roll me your six challenge die worth of damage. All right, that is five. Uh, however, that is not enough to put him down. Spend one for piercing two, or? Uh, oh, I should say you do get uh, two momentum on that. Okay. okay. Um... Hmm. Yeah, I'm open to suggestions, folks. Piercing GM would would piercing work here? Piercing would work. It would just be one momentum to ignore two resistance. Well, let's let's go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. All right. And sure enough, that is enough that when you stab him, there's actual resistance as you push the blade deeper and deeper and deeper, and you get a second coating across all of you. Ugh. But he is dead. He is uh, expired. That's really weird how the blood spatter got us from around the corner. <laughs> well, it's holodeck physics, you know. Uh, Bree will be applauding RJ. Like, yeah, give him a thumbs up. This is disturbing. But you're... But I... I am pretty good at it. <laughs> That's slightly more disturbing, RJ, but all right. Uh, it's, just, it's just holograms, so. Well, oh, I knew there was a reason that I wore a red shirt. No. What? Speaking of, do you, do you want to... Uh, I have another joke that I was going to use when we were actually going to do this as an adventure and not as a desperate fight for survival. So there's a, a, a pirate captain, right? And every time he's about to go into battle, he tells his crew, bring me my red shirt, right? And so one day, one of his crew members says, well, why do you say that every time? He says, well, it's because when I get my red shirt, the crew won't see when I bleed. It made sense. Uh, the pirate runs across uh, the, the English Navy's pirate hunters, um, and as the battle commences, he yells out, bring me my brown pants. Any, Does anybody? he bleed brown? Well, uh, humor. You're one of those bards, huh? <laughs> I mean, play to your strength, right? I guess. I don't have a tricorder, but is there any way that I can assess the environment here? Is there some kind of like psychotropic <laughs> compound or something like that that's, that's affecting us? The Commodore is hearing voices from her god. William seems to be going insane. Why don't you roll me a uh, reason science difficulty there. of zero? And you would have a focus. If we were around a table, I'd yell, I'm not crazy, you're crazy. Oof. You don't know. You just don't know. I think it's funnier that way. I don't. Um. All right. Shall we carry on? Uh, hey, Williams. You uh, you see anything useful in that room other than dead guys? Oh, you know what? Um. Hey, let me see if I remember how to do this. Hey, DM. I want to search this room. And almost uh, as if responding to you, uh, objects in the room begin to illuminate, like as if their edges are glowing. Uh, what you see is that the basin in front of you, or in front of the altar, uh, it is glowing with a slightly red light. Uh, the chairs that are next to you are glowing with a sort of white glow. Hmm. If I cast detect magic, is that what I've done here? Yeah, that's basically what you've done. This bowl is 
magic. Bring it with us. Well, if it's glowing red, I don't want to touch it. I mean, aren't we here to like break up a ritual? Shouldn't we be breaking up all the rituals until we figure out which one's the right one? All right. <clears throat> I'm going to take my dagger. I'm going to walk over to um, Lee. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hand to him and say, hold this. I totally thought he was going to stab you for a second there. Well, you do know that I can't use this. I I know it's your your class is not proficient with the weapon. I know that, but... No, I, I mean that it's... Lieutenant Commander Lee Tobin really just... I, it's been a long time since I went to the targeting range, and okay. I don't think I've ever actually held a, a non-phaser or directed energy-based weapon. William just claps him on both shoulders and says, Lee, I have faith in you. Think and of it's it really like easy. A... The pointy end goes into the other guy. So. Yes, I, I have I have actually treated knife wounds before, so I am aware of how a knife works Jesus, in a, a kind of academic so sense. It's 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 okay. I just need you to hold this because if this is cursed and I go berserk, that way I don't have a knife. You want me to hold you down? And then, you know, Bree's got a 50-50 shot of beating me if she gets to keep the sword and the shield. 50-50? She's going to break the whole thorax. <laughs> just pick up the bowl. Just on, break guys, the little, fucking bowl, RJ. A little, bit of, a little bit of levity. Break the bowl, oh boy. or I will. Do it. All right, I'll swat the bowl down. That's an order. The... <laughs> <laughs> I'll swat the bowl down. Out thing. Like, okay, but not because you said so. So you uh, you go to strike the bowl and send it clattering to the ground, if I understood correctly. Yeah. And what happens is, is when your hand slaps it, it does begin to tumble. But I'm going to spend two threat because I find it funny that you slap it in such a way that it's some of it spills back onto you. Oh. And uh, <laughs> can you guess what the liquid is? More blood. More blood. Uh, oh, my God. We're all going to be red shirts at the end of this thing. God, that's disgusting. I'm glad it wasn't me. It's all clotted. Good job, Ugh. Williams. Yes. Good man. What it's... Okay, so um, it was going red. Why was it going red? I think it then. was. A... Williams, oh, I need the... you to roll me a fitness medicine, please. Difficulty of two. Uh oh. Uh -oh. In character, the game master tells you that this is a constitution saving throw. Oh no. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh spend a point of momentum for an extra die. Uh GM would buy survival. I'll give you survival, okay. sure. Three successes, you actually get a point of momentum off that. You feel fine. Oh uh, god. I think it was the Maybe the blood, maybe the prayers, plus the bloody chalice, some kind of magic. Good job. I um, have a lot of blood on me. Yeah. Let's keep going. All right. So again, shoes. Archuleta, I'll start moving, unless you've loaded in at this point. Um, I will go ahead and... Nope. Okay. So you move down to the right and pass through, uh, well, through the corridor into a larger open space. And whoop, don't freak out on me, stream. Uh, to the right is another passageway that appears to be abandoned. Uh, you see in the room beyond that there is some form of a desk with writing implements but there's also another desk which appears to have some sort of embalming tools on it. Uh, you don't see anyone in that direction. Um, as far as the line to the southwest on this map, uh, as you once again peek around the corner, 
uh, what you are seeing is that there are at least two cultists that you can see uh, standing guard past where you need to go. Okay, cool. And if everyone could move where they would like to be uh, before we actually figure out what people are doing. I'd like to see, I'd like to ask and request Zeke to go take a look at the uh, the notebook. Okay. Or, or, or leave together. We could go together. We could split the party. It always works. <laughs> Is that some sort of appropriate response in this kind of game? Is that mm -hmm. what one should do? Um, no, it's typically frowned upon. Oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, hey, um, there's like a book dust down there. Do, do you guys want to go check it out? There's some guards over here. I'll keep watch. See if you can figure something out about this. Yeah, sure. Hmm. Uh, very well, uh, Commodore. Uh, crewman Zikatherex, would you mind going first? Oh, crap. All right. So, Zeke, you squeeze through a narrowing of the passageway, and I'm going to move you up just a little bit. Because you see, uh, waiting to your left, uh, before a large tunnel that leads into the depths of the Earth, are another two cultists. <laughs> well, I can't scream back at the Commodore, but we got bogeys now over here. All right, I would motion for him to pull back to uh, the Commodore's location, or to William's location. Uh, Commander, uh, it seems that we have cultists. Uh, that's such a stupid thing to say. Cultists on <laughs> both sides of us. So what I would recommend is that we set up some kind of defensive barricade here and draw them to us so that we can funnel them into us. I'll throw up. Oh, this is so ridiculous. I'll throw off a fireball into one of their groups, and then we'll retreat to this, you know, bottleneck. All right, let's make Send. it make it so. Sound Even though the path Mark is taking us on is not, it's this way. It's not this way. My concern is that the moment we engage either group, whichever direction we go all of them will start converging on us. Right. Well, there's there's one direction that we know we won't be attacked from, and that's back the way we came. So we retreat down that hallway. It's fairly narrow. I think one of your Tetrion plasma balls could uh, do some damage. That is my hope, yes. Great. Uh, yeah, let's do it. You're right, this is really dumb. It is your program, though, Commodore. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, but it was more fun when it wasn't hurting my crew. If we get the bugs worked out, though, I would definitely run this scenario again. Might just have to be you, me, and Z, because I don't think Lee's ever gonna come in a holodeck ever again in the rest of his life. You know, I'm starting to understand Commander Rass's point of view on this matter. <laughs> you guys can just play the tabletop version of this; it's a lot safer. Why? Why would you, humans? Oh. Good lord. <laughs> okay. All right. So, what group is getting fireballed? Is my question. Uh, I would probably peek around this corner here and lob okay. a fireball in there while the others fall back to this location and Bree does her 300 impression. Mm. I'm going to need the captain to give me the best. This is Sparta. No. Uh, yeah. So Lee, you, uh, you peek around the corner here and uh, that's going to be a control and a security of difficulty two to see if you can fireball these cultists. Okay, then uh, because I'm sort of hiding behind that, uh, that pillar and I have a little bit of time, I'm going to take the opportunity to aim. Okay. And then I will buy an extra die using one momentum. Okay. 
So that's control security. Yep. And 3d20, I can reroll one, right? Mm hmm. Well, you're going to well, need that... a crit. I believe. Uh, you shouldn't. Okay. Control security, one die. No I didn't believe hard enough. I'm sorry. Mm hmm. Uh, so, uh, what happens is, Lee, you conjure up your Tetrion Bolt, and you send it flying at the cultists, but your aim is off, even though you took the extra time to do so, and it literally whizzes between their two heads, and they, uh, turn and shout, and that shout is echoing through the corridors, and the cultists to the south immediately draw their weapons, and start rushing towards the Commodore. So I'm going to zoom out the map here to try and capture everyone. There we go. That should be more than enough for the stream. But yeah, let's uh, let's get everybody into a turn order. So let's see. Uh, remove all turns. Yep. Doing all right. So same, uh, same process as before. Uh, you're going to roll challenge die equal to your security score. And then for the cultists, uh, I'm just going to have the cultists move on their just one turn to make this easier. Uh, they rolled three. Okay, so they are at a three. And I'll just delete these extra turns. All right, so Zeke got a five. Commodore got a four. William's got a three. And Lee has already put his in. Excellent. Sort descending. All right. So up first is going to be Mr. Zeke. So Zeke, what would you like to do? I am going to rush in and try to take advantage of any kind of surprise left after a giant fireball floods into this area. Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and move me in here. Okay. Okay. And then I'll just pounce on the nearest of the two cultists. Okay. Are you staying in normal form? Are you going to try a wolf or a tiger? Or... Um, I'm just going to be, you know, six foot five Gorn. It seems pretty nice. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's going to be a uh, daring security difficulty of one. And it is opposed. I believe. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Well, now I said it. I lose. That's what could happen. All right. Two successes. Let's see how the cultist does. Uh, he also gets two successes, but you are the actor. So go ahead and uh, roll me four challenge die. Pardon me while I figure out where my number key is. All right, so that is currently four damage. Do you want to spend momentum to re-roll those zeros? Do you want to gain piercing though even with piercing it wouldn't be enough to take him down as a gorn do i already get vicious um yeah i'm basically giving your claws a vicious one so you are doing four damage before resistance oh, okay. how much momentum do we have one uh i would like to let somebody else who might need that more than me okay so the uh, cultist will take a slash as you, you know, maybe slap him across the face or across his chest with your claws. And uh, he goes, oh, you cur! And uh, I'm going to actually spend some threat here to make the cultist go first before Archuleta does. Uh, so he is going to take his dagger and attempt to kind of do an overhand strike down at your clavicle. So let's see how well he does. <laughs> uh, yeah, Zeke, I need you to roll me three successes here on a daring security. Otherwise, you are getting stabbed. Guess who's getting stabbed tonight? I mean, uh, I believe. Do I, just, do I just roll one? No, you roll two. two. You roll okay. two. And... You could also take that momentum. Yeah, I'm going to borrow that momentum for an additional. All right. I got no focuses because I am not a combat person. 
Oh, crap. Oh, dear. Uh, I'm going to say that complication is I'm going to reroll those damage die. So let's see what happens. All right, so Zeke, you're lucky. Uh, so Zeke, as the dagger plunges into you, this one finds purchase in your clavicle, and it really, really hurts. And there's even a little bit of... Gorn blood is what, green? I guess. Green blood sort of oozes out from the wound. Um, it definitely hurt way more than the first stab, um, but not enough to actually put you down. So you are going to take four stress of damage. But now it's Commodore's turn. And you said that they're going first? Uh, only that one cultist. Okay. Um, then I'd like to just approach the cultist on the right. Okay. The more easterly one and swing at him okay. with my short sword. All right. Going to be a, uh, oh, that's right. You haven't loaded. Can you do rolls or is it just yeah, the map? Yeah, I can do itself? rolls. I just can't see. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll me your daring security here. Let's see what happens. And I should note that as Archuleta, as you run forward, um, you notice that from around the corner, the blind corner, you see that there's not two, but three cultists here. Oh, great. Great. Uh, it can't be evasive action. Nah, unfortunately not. All right, no successes. Let's see what they Dang. roll. They score one. So this is interesting because what happens is the cultist uh, blocks your short sword with their dagger. Mm -hmm. And then they drive the dagger through your breastplate. Um, so that is essentially seven damage. Ooh. However... Oh. However, I will say that your breastplate can absorb two challenge die worth of damage. So roll me two challenge die, and we'll take that off of the seven. Okay. Um... Okay. So you are still going to take five stress of damage. You will be at seven out of 12. However... The magic number here is five, so you would be taking an injury, which would effectively remove you from combat. You okay. can give me two threat to stay in the fight. Um, do not give me determination. Determination's a trap. If you want to stay in the fight, you would have to give me two threat. I have to give you that threat now. Mm-hmm. Okay, you can have it. All right. So yeah, the dagger plunges through your breastplate and it hits your... That's the sternum, right? The the plate over yeah. your chest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hits your sternum and doesn't get through your sternum, but you definitely feel the, the metal on bone. And you don't bleed, per se, as it's just sort of a psh, little bit of blood that spews out. And it hurts. It hurts a lot. Oh, gosh. So, uh, sh yeah, she'll clutch and then, like, kind of stumble back. So, uh, I will say that talking is technically a free action. So, if you want to give me another... Wait, Williams, do you have quick to action? I sure do. Well, I would say if the Commodore alerts you to her problem, you could use quick to action to go before the cultists. Uh, then I will, I will she, do that. She will alert via yelling his name. All righty. All right. Well, I guess we're doing this. So. <laughs> God. And. I'm going to try something. So since we're trapped within the confines of the program, mm -hmm. then we can use the program to beat itself. Um, so since I'm a bird, uh, I've got access to a little bit of magic power myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will attempt to cast a sleep spell on these cultists in this hallway. I like it. Now, how to translate into Star Trek Adventures terms. That's the, that's the tricky bit. Let's call this a control 
and security. I'm going to make it a difficulty of three, but if you succeed, you will get all three cultists. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you a point of threat for an extra die. Okay. Uh, and I have augmented control as well. So. All right. Already one success. Uh, let's just hope that that complication doesn't factor in. But here we go. Um, and no local focus. Wow, that is a significant number of successes. That is uh, five successes total. So you actually get two momentum. And yeah, so Williams, you sort of wave your hand through the air and your fingertips trail a purple sort of haze. And that same purple haze sort of descends over the cultists. And the cultists' movements begin to slow down. They get really, really sluggish. And then right before our Chuleta, all three of these go to sleep. So I'm just yeah, don't, gonna don't don't touch them. Yeah, there we go. There's no sleep. problem. <laughs> but yeah, so with that crisis averted, we now have another cultist that has not gone up here to the right. So uh, Zeke, I need you to roll me a daring security, please, as this cultist comes in with another slash across your chest. Got momentum. Do you have momentum? And tell you what, your number to beat, you need two successes. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm a transport chief, not a security officer. A momentum? Uh, yeah, I'll pick a momentum for three times. Uh... And two successes you get. So go ahead and roll me four challenge die as you not only nimbly dodge out of the way of his strike, but you apply your own counterattack. And let's see how well that does. All right, that is four damage. Uh, would you like to re-roll those two zeros or are you going to keep what you got? I'll keep what I got. All righty. So, uh, Lee, you have seen your big buddy Zeke uh, get stabbed almost well stabbed once and almost stabbed a second time what would you like to do uh i would clutch up on the uh the staff that i'm carrying and mm -hmm. attempt to uh well take a baseball bat swing at uh the first cultist that he originally injured so okay. i'll race in next to him and attempt to attack the uh, injured cultist okay go for it that's going to be a daring security difficulty of one This is not going to go well. <laughs> I just got to believe. I believe. All right. One success. Let's see how the cultist does. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh. So I actually get some threat on that. But the good news is you only take four damage as uh, you are not only stabbed in return, but I'm going to say with that many successes, they rebuff you. I think that's how you say it. Uh, and you are thrown back 10 feet, nearly falling over backwards, but you catch yourself in time. And that is your turn. And Williams, you've already gone. So top of the initiative order is Zeke. Zeke, what would you like to do? Having uh, in now engaged in close quarters with these guys for a little while and also taking into account that this program is a little different than others, uh, would I be able to apply materialization systems to try and get some sense of why these holograms are acting the way they are? As of like, is our program malfunction? Are they programmed to be this way? Um, just sort of some insight that might allow me to take advantage of a uh, a, a flaw. Uh, yeah, like a, a cycle in the force field that makes it a little bit weaker or easier to destabilize. Insight Engineering, difficulty of three. And you will have a focus. And you get three. So, it's almost like this is... They have been coded this way. I'll, I'll use that to start with. They have been coded this way 
to react in a sort of hostile fashion to anyone that approaches them. What I would say, though, is your unique insight tells you that if you were to, say, faint left, then go right, or some similar sort of faint, um, it would work, and you would gain a bonus d20 on your next attack against them. Now, this trick oh. is only going to work once, so use it wisely. Oh. Hmm. Uh, all right. Um, do I... Did I use my turn with the for the insight and uh, I can Nah nah, you turn? still have another action. Alright, so I'm gonna um I'm gonna faint to to my left mm -hmm. and then uh go in for like a sweeping rake across the right to okay. try and push this guy into his buddy. Okay. So that he can get a little bit of space and Lee can get back into the fray without me taking two shots. Alright, I'll let it happen. It's going to be a uh, daring security difficulty of one, and it is opposed. Security. And you said I got an extra because of the insight? Yep. And then would materialization systems apply? I'll give it to you, but only for this one roll. That makes sense. Wow. Wow. That's five successes. Let's let's see what the cultists roll, because there's no way they're going to beat that. But let's see how much momentum you get. Uh, you get four momentum from that. Very nice. And I'm going to say what happens, Zeke, is as you go in with the feint and then swipe with uh, across your right, uh, you almost get a fit of inspiration seeing the pit behind them. And you knock them in such a way that the first cultist is knocked off balance, grabs at his fellow, and then they both tumble backwards into the bottomless pit. And they wow. are no more. Nice. Awesome. Oh. Got but... you. you okay over there, Lee? Uh, I'll be I'll be alright. I just some broken ribs, that's all. In light internal bleeding. It's all right. <laughs> Yeah, I feel you. Oh God, I'm too old for this. But you guys are out of combat. You can move freely about the cabin. <laughs> they are not out of combat, though. Uh, the cultists are asleep until one of you stabs them, basically. Nope. 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 What's that fire pit? Uh, the one that Lee is uh, seeing? Kind of around, yeah. Uh, that is a, just a big brazier, uh, with fire in it. Uh, if Lee were to go check it out, uh, he would see there are sort of sleeping implements. So bed rolls, um, not quite beds, almost like just mattresses on the floor. Like this is probably where the cultists were sleeping. Okay. So did we ever figure out what was at the end of the hallway? We have I don't know, as Lee or Z here. checked it out. Ruben. They ask us to go look at the table. Again, Truman, would you mind uh, taking the lead? You're vastly more competent at this than I am, it would seem. Uh, yeah, I'll, be, I'll try to be discreet. Okay. So yeah, Zeke will move to the end of the hallway. All right. So again, you see two tables of embalming tools and then one table with a book on it. Um, all right, uh, I'll pick up the book. All right. And uh, you open it. And at first, you know, it's just gibberish to you. You have no idea what it's saying. But almost as if the program itself, because again, you did roll earlier that you know, you know what's sort of starting to go on with this program. The program adjusts it so that, so Lee, you still can't read it. But to Zeke, what you see is Gorn, or in terms of D&D, you see Dragonborn language. Um, so you see in Gorn, quote unquote, are some form of ritual. And this ritual says something along the lines of, should the great dragon ever come back? enact this ritual it doesn't say what the ritual does it just says to enact it hmm. 
Uh, it looks like this ritual is a response to the return of the dragon, not actually trying to summon the dragon, unless they got another ritual that does that. Is there any indication as to what is required of this ritual? Unfortunately, ritual. no. Well, it does say that, so the requirements are, uh, since I'm going to give this to you free, um, the requirements of the ritual are that you must spill the blood of a pure and noble soul. And that, that is literally what it says. P spill the blood of a pure, noble soul. Oh, I guess that's me. Uh, <laughs> certainly not anyone else in this away party, but uh, okay. Oh, nice. Ouch. <laughs> I don't know. Security Officer Williams, he seems to be doing a pretty good job keeping the captain protected. You're right. I may have judged him too harshly. And you, crewman. I, I've been very impressed by the work that you put in thus far. Uh, just... well, well, no, I didn't mean no slight against you, sir. I, uh, I, I do respect your position on the ship, and working with you has been pretty awesome. Um, I just noticed that, like, Williams and the Commodore, they got, like, friendship, and, like, that's, like, connected right there. So, yeah, pure and noble. Well, uh, crewman, uh, I appreciate the sentiment, and I greatly respect your competency as well and perhaps we should stop this little session of you know mutual congratulation and <laughs> you know wait Zeke until we're not start running in back towards them while he's talking right, right right so yeah you guys uh group up in front of the uh sleeping cultists as it were um brie is still kind of clutching her bloodied breastplate and pierced male and just uh she looks pissed <laughs> did you find anything uh Probably. yeah we got word that uh if uh if the big dragon god shows up they're gonna enact some kind of ritual that involves the sacrifice of somebody who's pure and noble oh okay well nobody here thank god that's a relief <laughs> uh hey. commodore you uh well you're bleeding slightly profusely um i wish i just had a dermal regenerator or a I, something but perhaps i could take a look i, you, I may you, be able to you help. are yeah i mean you're the you were a doctor not with these kinds of tools, I wasn't, but... Uh... <sighs> well, sure, if you need... Just, that would be good before I die. Oh, it, it looks over. like it's just a flesh wound, but... Uh... Yeah, tis, tis but a scratch. <sighs> Great. Stop bleeding, you. Archuleta, the voice of the DM whispers in your ear, you still do have two charges of lay on hands. She says, I thought I could only use that once for scene. This is technically a new scene. I lay my hands on myself. You heal the full. Okay. Hey. Uh, all right. Hey, hey. Pure of blood. Here we are. Back again. Now let's go uh, find the rest of whatever's down here so we can finish this damn story. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love that the frustration is totally in character, but out of character, you guys are hopefully having fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So I'm just going to move Archuleta's token here. Hopefully, Please can do. you all see Archuleta's vision? Like, does it show up for the rest yep. of you? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm just going to move Archuleta here. Um, so Archuleta, uh, the rest of the party, you kind of move over the sleeping cultists and continue to follow the line. And eventually you emerge uh, overlooking a large, um, almost like a natural cavern with stairs that lead along the edge of a flowing pool of water. And if you were to look to your immediate left, there is actually a waterfall that juts out of the stonework and pours into this pool. And oh. the line points down the sort of, I guess you would call it a catwalk, quote unquote, that follows the edge of this pool deeper into the earth. Okay. 
She will ask Marok. Um, yeah, yeah, you follow. You everybody's follow here. Okay. Yeah, every, everybody's here. Marok, where? I I need your guidance. Hello. Hello, my child. Hi. So the path ends here. Where are we to go? The path is straightforward from here. You will find your foe at the end. Beneath the water. No, follow the passageway next to the water. Okay. Thank you. She'll look for a way to, tra- to traverse the, the path. It's jumpable, you think, but there's probably going to be a roll required. Could I examine the water? Is there anything that seems unnatural about it? Uh, for instance, is there any kind of disturbance of the water? Um, is the water itself actually water, as far as I can tell, based on my cursory examination? Yeah, reason, science, difficulty of uh, one. Good question. I never know what lurks beneath. And I will use uh, augmented ability reason for a free success. Hmm. Very nice. So that's uh, four successes. So you actually have three floating momentum to do something with. Um, But yeah, this is actual water, just plain regular water. Um, the only thing that you would note is that as the river, underground river, gets further into the darkness past your line of vision, um, it begins to grow more violent, more churning. So it's almost as if it goes from a period of just being a pool of water fed by a waterfall to, like, actual rapids. Mm. Could I spend those two momentum uh, Mm -hmm. to say that as I was peering over the water and you know, examining it carefully, I see mm-hmm. that there's a kind of passageway that will lead us across more easily. I, I would so say most definitely to bridge you can that do gap. that. Yeah. Okay. So there is there is some something that Archie let him miss, but you pointed out and you're like, yeah, we'll just use that over there. Oh yeah, great call. Yeah. Looks looks much easier. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well uh, here we go. So she'll she'll put her sword and shield on her back in order to traverse it carefully. Okay. And since you did spend the two momentum for the easy path, I'm just going to simply say that you proceed into the darkness. Uh, We'll say for sake of argument that there's eventually torchlight, so you're not like pure cave darkness. Um, But the torchlight is coming from a large sort of auditorium slash atrium uh, that I will reveal to you now. And what you're seeing uh, is that the passageway opens up into, again, an atrium slash auditorium, uh, again with the odd Corinthian co- columns. But what's really catching your attention is the summoning circle, sort of runic summoning circle that is swirling with magical energy and a woman standing before it. Uh, she has dark purple hair and is sort of weaving her hands through the air conjuring up further magic and pouring it into the summoning circle. She doesn't seem to have seen you quite yet, but uh, it's probably a safe bet that anything from this point forward is going to require some form of stealth if you do not wish to be seen. I'm not sure that it's like we can avoid eventually being seen. So what do you guys think? Fireball. Maybe. You know, that hasn't worked out so well for us in the past. Uh, Williams, maybe you should just sneak up nearer to her and stab her. Yeah. That's been that's been a real great go-to plan for us thus far. All right. All right. I'm going to take my dagger and attempt to sneak. All right. Well, attempting to sneak is going to be a, a fitness con <laughs> difficulty of two, but I have I threat. Her. Uh, I'm going to make this a difficulty of three. Cool. I'm gonna. You could woo her with song. Just break out your accordion. Just. She does look like the wooing type. She looks like. Touch a book by its cover. Uh, Make a good point, but. I don't know if the book's cover has demonic ruins on it. 
Don't judge a demon by the runes, I guess. All right. Still got, um, sorry, Jim, what do you say that role was? Fitness like, con. Right. Difficulty of Fitness three. Con. Fitness con. Uh, so I'm going to spend three momentum guys for a further two days. Oh, Lord. Oh, dear. Uh, Why? No. <laughs> so let me measure out your distance here. So you can get maybe about there uh, before the woman turns and mm. smiles at you and says, <laughs> this is who they send as their champion. Well, you're too late. The great Zathrith will emerge and strangely she doesn't snap her fingers or throw a fireball at you instead she steps backwards into the summoning circle and her form emolates in a dark flame a jet black flame yet instead of yelling in pain or anything of the sort she just continues to laugh and as the fire sort of expands outward from the body it begins to take the shape of a large draconic figure, complete with wings, complete with deadly claws, and Zathrith the Great materializes out of the fire and says, I told you coming here was a mistake. And we're going to roll initiative. Great. And this is great Anyways, because this is... This is uh this is actually going to be uh a creature I've wanted to run from the core book for a while. So Wow. Um no, it's not it's not like a Draco Lich or anything, is it? No, 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 no. Good, thank you. And I, I mean like the STA book, not the like D D book. Oh. Alright, so uh let's see. So Lee got two. You already put it in. Cool. Williams got oh, three. Okay. Uh, Vassar got three, or Zeke did. Commodore Archuleta leading the pack. All right, let's see how well Zathrith does. Survey says they have this many die. They are going to go number four. All right, so sort by descending. Commodore, you are up first. What would you like to do? Um... <laughs> she's going to draw her sword and shield again mm -hmm. and step out in front kind of around Williams okay so maybe about there I'm assuming yeah it's fine there's a delay but um she'll point her sword at the dragon and mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, she'll say, foul beast, I shall smite thee from thy mortal coil, newly created, back to where you belong. And, uh, she'll slash at him. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to say that, uh, this is going to be an opposed daring security. Uh, okay. they, uh, have a number of die. You may wish to spend some momentum here. Okay. Spin what we've got. Daring security. Um. So if I want to roll three, what am I spending? Two. One momentum. One momentum. We'll do that. And. Uh, inspiration. No. I'll give you inspiration, sure. Yes. Because I said a speech. Mm -hmm. So, okay. All right, three successes. There you go. I'm going to give Zathrith one additional die with threat. Zathrith has scored three, but tie goes to the attacker. So, yeah, Archuleta, go ahead and roll me some damage on your sword, which for you should be five challenge die. All right. So you come in with your sword and slash it across the creature's scales and doesn't even leave a dent, not a scratch, nothing. Does 
absolutely zero damage. We gotta do that ritual thing. Well, before you can do so, Zathras' turn. Zathras is gonna step out of the dissipating summoning circle to get even closer, and is going to rear back his head and let out a breath of necrotic fire. Joy. So, uh, he needs two successes here. He only gets one. Interesting. So, uh, Commodore and Commander, uh, as he rears his head back and goes to breathe onto you, you both dodge out of the way as the black necrotic flame just soars past where you were previously standing, uh, pouring around the column nearest to Lee and Zeke. Uh, but no one is harmed. Everyone is perfectly okay. Mm -hmm. And it is now Zeke's turn. You're muted. Also muted. Okay, big dragon. Um, it, it's there, and I th I think because it's there, what do we got to lose? What 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 do you think, uh, Lee? Uh, we do that thing. Do it. All right. Um, you got anything sharp? What? You want me to give you the weapon you're going to use to kill me? That's that, what? okay. Wait. You have claws. Wait. Just do it, man. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll pick the book and um, it, it has instructions on how to do the thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, horrible Zaytherth, you wretched fiend, I offer this sacrifice of pure and noble blood to send you back to the abyss, and I will stab into Lee's heart. All right, go ahead and roll me a uh, four challenge die, please. And that's good. That's very good, actually, because he only had six stress remaining, and it was very possible you could have killed him. So Lee, yeah, he stabs into your chest, and there's definitely blood that is spilled. Um, but part of this ritual seems to be taking effect that as the blood falls onto the floor, it's almost like a droplet of water falling onto a still pool, where the impact of your blood onto the surface of the ground sort of ripples out in a glowing wave of white light that washes over the entire room, and Zathra screams, No, I was so close! No! And everything goes white. It's like an orb experience, but not an orb experience. As the holodeck returns to normal. Then standing there is your Game Master Hologram. And she says, that wasn't that fun. I, you did complain about it being hard before you yell at me, so I upped the difficulty. You're cute, so, aren't you? Are we still injured? Uh, you should probably go to sickbay and get that checked out, but yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. It's true. You, you were pure and noble like you said you were. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Well, after I decompile this program or find some way to kill a member of the Q continuum, that's not going to be true anymore. So, like, what? Let's... I'll, I'll pat Lee on the shoulder and I'll be like, I understand what you're going through, but that was reflective of your inner spirit. And I'm pretty sure that even in your frustration, it will temper you in time. I think you're going to be okay. I like you. <laughs> And I'll sock him in the in the shoulder. Oh, uh, oh, God! You, you have the strength of ten men. Watch it. Sorry. I think you broke something. God. Look, Let's go to sick bay. We'll be fine. Uh, add it to the list and go to sick bay. Yeah. Thank you, RJ. Your compassion is much appreciated. <laughs> 
it was really, really convenient for them to just leave the book right out there in the open, though. But, you know, Commodore, that was real smart, you know, to check that out. So, you know, you got the brains. That's why that's why you're in charge. Well, I I don't think we could have finished this without your guys's help. Sorry, I got us into some trouble. Where did you get this program? It was in like this market on Riza. The last time we were there, I don't know. This guy was selling them on the street. So I need a drink. Yeah, oh. probably not Synthail, right? I got some tequila. Uh, <laughs> six aft in like 20 minutes. Yeah, let me get let this me armor off. Take a sonic shower and get. I, I just, it's just, I know the blood is not still there, but symbolically, I, I just, I need to get clean. And uh, as you guys start to leave, the game master hologram says, come back again soon. And uh, our final scene is literally just shutting the door and her phasing out of reality. But yeah, that's, uh, that's session three of season three. What'd you guys think? Nice. You don't buy strange programs from strange people on right. <laughs> you buy horgons. No, nothing you take back from Ryza is a good thing. Yeah, what what happens on Ryza should stay, stay on Ryza. On Ryza. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Nice to get yeah, into the uh the uh, crypt world a little <laughs> bit. Yeah, like I said, I was trying to find a way to marry uh Dungeons and Dragons to Star Trek Adventures in a way that would make sense. And in a way that still gave you guys the free form to like, hey, I want to check out this hologram kind of a thing. So, um, yeah, you know, I think it worked or about as well as it could have. So mm -hmm. I'll I like that, that I got to talk to or bring out to talk to the patron. That was pretty cool. I kind of feel bad about Vassar uh, or about Zeke where, you know, you turned into the teddy bear and I actually made you turn into the teddy bear. That's, that was Zeke's first clue that something was wrong on this holodeck program, so. And yeah, as a point of order, that was not actually a cue. That was just a hologram that's, you, you complained it was too easy, so it upped the difficulty. Boy. So it turned me from a D&D &D bear into Ted from Ted. But yeah. I've yeah. seen yeah. Murder Bear from Ethan Bear. Mm -hmm. <sighs> just All a... Right. Just a, uh, what do they call those, uh, Easter egg? I've had this bear since I was five years old. He's Adorable. making his first streaming Goes on all your tonight. adventures. Yes. Clearly you need to do your next meeting with him. <laughs> Anyways, that's where I'm going to cut the stream. So uh, Twitch, YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, you will see these lovely people next week. Later stream. Bye.